Lit cut number one. Woo! Do some. We are given an array of integers called nums and an integer target. We need to return two indices. Let's call them i and j, such that nums of i plus nums of j is equal to target. And because we are not allowed to use the same element twice, i and j should be different. Each input has exactly one solution. So we don't need to handle the case where there's no solution and we don't need to report all solutions. So we can exit as soon as we find the solution. We return the solution in an array and the order doesn't matter. Let's take a look at the constraints. In the array, we have a minimum of two elements and up to 10,000. And we will see why it's limited to 10,000. The number inside the array and the target range from minus one billion to one billion, which means that even if we add two extremes, we should have at maximum plus or minus two billion, which stay in the range of a 32 bit integer. So we shouldn't worry about overflowing. Then maybe that's cheating, but if you look at the follow up, they ask us if we can find an algorithm that is less than big O of n square time complexity which means that we can start with a big O of n square algorithm. So the simplest solution is to try all possible values of i and j. To do that, we simply need to loop through the possible values of i and for each value of i, use another loop to try all the different possible values of j. Then because i and j need to be different, if i and j are equal, we continue to the next iteration. Otherwise, we check if nums of i plus nums of j is equal to the target. If that's the case, we return the indices i and j in an array. Let's try it. And it works. This is big O of n squared. But it's fine. So can I go on now? No, it's 10 a.m. and I need to pretend that I'm doing something productive because I cannot afford to get fired in this economy. Are you kidding me? So I took the time to build a small benchmarking script and our simple brute force solution works fine with 10,000 elements. But let's try with a 100,000 element. This is so slow. It's so boring. Kill me. Please kill me. So let's try to make it faster. One of the first thing to realize in our first solution is that we do a lot of unnecessary work. If you look at this matrix, there's a symmetry along the diagonal. And because the addition is commutative, I mean by that nums of i plus nums of j is equal to nums of j plus nums of i. So we can skip half of these computations because they are the same. To do that, we take the previous solution and instead of starting with j at zero, we can initialize it to i plus one. And because i and j are never going to be equal, we can remove the if i equal j condition. Let's submit this solution. It's better. And on my own data with 100,000 elements, it's still pretty slow, but it's about two times faster, which makes sense because we removed half of the work. However, this is still big O of n square. So if we want better results, we need to think differently. Usually when we want to decrease the time complexity, we can do it by increasing the memory space complexity. Okay, but what can we store? The way we have been trying to solve this problem is by looking at each element of the array and checking if adding one of its following elements sums up to the target number. Instead, what we can do is move the element we are looking at on the other side of the equation. Now, the problem is to know whether or not target minus nums of i exists inside the array. And if it does, we want to know its location. To do that, we want a data structure that given target minus nums of i returns its position if it exists. So a data structure that can tell me if an element exists and if it does, 
gives me a value. Hmm. I wonder what I can use. Chat, I need a data structure that can tell me if an element exists and if it does, gives me a value. Of course, a hash map. So we can start by defining a hash map and we populate it by setting the elements of the array as a key and their index as the value. Now to find the indices i and j, we just need to loop through the array and for each element, we compute target minus nums of i and we look if it exists in the map. If it exists, we can return the indices. But before, we need to make sure that they are not equal. Let's try this. It works fine. And let's try it on 100,000 elements. So much quicker. It's night and day. So we could stop there, but we're going to improve our solution a little bit. We don't actually need to populate the hash map before looking for the solution. We can do it at the same time. You see, we can modify the way we think about the problem a third time. If I go back to this slide, when we are looking at the element i, we check in the map if one of the following elements is equal to target minus nums of i. But instead, we can look at the previous elements. So I can put this line at the end of the second for loop and delete the first one. So now, when we start, we will look at the first element. The map will be empty. So the if condition will return false. And the element will be added to the map. For the second element, it will check if the first element is the solution. Then for the third element, it will look at the two first. And so on. And because we are doing this, we know that we will not find the current element in the map. So we don't need to compare the indices. We can delete this condition. And we should be good. And on 100,000 elements, it's fast. So here we can see that using a hash map significantly reduces the time it takes to find the solution. But that's not always true. If you take a look at this graph on my machine, brute force is actually faster when the array has about 200 elements or less. And I think that this is true for a lot of problems. When you have a small enough number of elements, using brute force can actually be faster than anything else you can try. So make sure to know your input size and don't be too quick to discard brute force. Of course, if your n is large, use a better algorithm. I mean, look at this. We can really see the n square behavior on this graph. Oh, and if you care about JavaScript, then if you are wondering why I'm using map.has instead of using like map.get and checking if it's undefined, well, it's because it's, uh, it's faster. Check this graph. The yellow curve is the one using has instead of get. It's not a huge difference, but it's a bit faster. Uh, okay. That was lit code. Lit code, I love lit code. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. And if you love lit code too, you can subscribe. Subscribe if you're beautiful. Subscribe if you're smart. If you don't subscribe, you're, you're kind of ugly. <laughs> oh, wait, I should do like the, the YouTube kids, uh, YouTube channels. Subscribe to increase your chance of surviving. If you don't subscribe, I will die. If you don't subscribe, you are ugly. Subscribing makes you beautiful. Subscribe.